I know that the hour is late. I know that the members are tired, but children in the foster care system are tired as well. They're tired of the type of system that they have had to live within, the problems that they have had to endure for years, years and years upon years, because the state of Texas that has become their conservator has not done what has been necessary to ensure that a child removed from their home, removed from an environment allegedly that was not safe for them into the care of this state. These children have a very rough time while we sit here and meander around and we talk when a very important bill affecting them is up. Some of us talk so loud that I can't even hear what I'm about to say to you. But this is an important bill for the children of Texas. I have spent my entire career in the legislature working on issues pertaining to the Department of Family and Protective Services, fighting day in and day out to try to find a way to make life safe for them. I was fortunate enough that the speaker appointed me to chair a committee on child fatalities. That committee worked day in and day out with professionals who looked at the concerns within our system. Children came to us who had aged out of the system, and they told us about being locked in bathrooms, about their meals being withheld from them if they did not do what they were told, about not being able to practice their own religious convictions, about not being able to see their friends, about not being able to get the medical care that they needed, about being beat day in and day out. When Ann Heigelstein, the former commissioner of the Department of Family Protective Services, came to me and to many who were serving in the legislature in 2005 and said we're working on a foster care redesign, an adoption care redesign, we're going to set up a system that we're going to ensure that the funds will be used to bring costs down and make sure that the children have the best outcomes less costs for better outcomes. It was not to be a system that we privatized and started changing the parameters and not have the concern of the child. The concerns of the child as the primary issue. This bill is not about the child. This bill is talking about the religious convictions of certain persons. That's not about the child. Nobody asked, is the child a Catholic, a Baptist, or a Presbyterian, or even if they're atheists? Nobody has been concerned about that. It's all about all oh, the religious convictions of certain people who may work to do the foster system program, and to say, oh, well, if they're not going to provide this because of their religious conviction, then just refer them. Refer them. But you don't have to refer them to get anything. Just refer them. When did the state of Texas start telling contractors, if you don't want to do something that is required in your contract, just refer it to somebody else? That's not fiscal conservatism, and it's certainly not good for the children of this state that are taken from their families. You know, everyone talks about the abuse and the horrible families that these kids are in, but do you know that neglect, neglect is also defined as they do not have electricity in their homes or they don't have food in their homes, or there's a hole in the roof 
of their home, or it's not meeting health and safety. Well, when Albert Hawkins was Commissioner of Health and Human Services, he made sure that federal funds, temporary assistance to needy families could be used up to $2,000 when they were doing family-based decision-making to repair that hole in the roof or the stairs that the kids and the grandmother couldn't walk up so those families could stay together. But you know what? That couldn't happen this session. It couldn't happen this session because all 110 million of temporary assistance to needy families was placed in the base bill as if it was new money for the Department of Family and Protective Services. But it wasn't new money. That was money that came from the Obama administration to a state that always says, feds stay out of here. But federal money was placed in the base bill to give an illusion that additional funds were placed into Department of Family and Protective Services and cash now, cash that could have been used to fund exceptional items that were dearly needed, exceptional items like you talk about children who have been staying in the offices of employees it's not because they didn't have a foster home. Anybody who told you that, they've got a bridge to sell you over some little swamp in Florida. The reason those kids are in those offices is because the state has not gone up on the daily amount to the facility that provides the psychiatric care in Oklahoma. The state has not paid the money to make sure that enough beds and enough rooms were available for those kids. Those kids would love to sit in here and joke around and laugh and be able to go to the members lounge and get something to eat. They would love to stand here as we have a different minister who comes in every day, but they can't do that because they're not adults. They're in a system that has failed them, and the proof is that the courts have said we have failed them. Earlier today, my daughter, who I adopted from the Department of Family and Protective Services, came and sat in my chair she looked around the room and she asked, Mom, are y'all going to do something better for the kids who are not as lucky as me? And I wish I could tell her that we are going to do something better. But this bill is not the answer. Democrats and Republicans in the past Governor Bush to President Bush made sure that we had legislation fostering connections to success that George W. Bush as president put on the books in Washington, D.C. We mirrored that legislation in Texas so we could ensure that we could have programs for these children as they aged out of foster care. Because unlike the average kid, when a child ages out of foster care, they don't have an aunt or an uncle or a cousin or a grandparent or someone they can turn to and say, hey, can you loan me $50? We don't think about that. We set up systems Democrats and Republicans in years past to make sure that there were protections in place for every child in foster care. We didn't say, hey, if your religious conviction says you want to only have homeschool, and I don't have a problem with homeschool, and I've got 
family members who have been homeschooled. But one of the things with foster children is that we wanted to make sure there was additional set of eyes placed on them when they went to school. So we knew that they were healthy, that we knew that they were safe. Remember, just four years ago, these brave foster care alums came to us and testified that they were being beat regularly. They were being sexually assaulted, that they were being locked in the rooms. I know of some who still, when they get ready to date, are locked in the bathroom so they don't get out because their foster parent doesn't know what else to do with them. And we're going to eliminate the system of making sure that additional eyes are on them? What if it's someone who decides that they don't want to have immunizations? Well, I'm sorry, there are certain cultures, there are certain races that have to have certain types of medical treatment. You deny that to them. They're not gonna have a better life. If our foster care system, if the Department of Family and Protective Services is truly about the child, we wouldn't have a bill that's talking about the conscientious religious values of the caseworker. Representative Leach raised a point of order. In closing, let me just say Fire. that this bill says nobody will be denied, and it's about diversity. If it's about diversity, then why isn't the Center for the Elimination of Disproportionality and Disparity that looks at the fact that 40% of the African American children are removed from their families yet only make up 9% of this state are in the system, but it's not in this bill. Ladies and I'm gonna stop in just one second, but this is not just professional, this is personal.